Good evening. I am Pastor Mary Schmotzer, uh, pastor here at Shiloh United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome. I do, uh, I do want to say it is good that we can gather in person this year to celebrate and rejoice, especially since we had to cancel last year. Uh, it's good for us to be together to welcome Christ our Lord into our lives. I also want to welcome those who are joining us um, on Facebook or by recording. Uh, I'm glad that you are able to participate in the service as well. I do want to share a few announcements with you that should help our worship together this evening. First, our offering plates are in the back of the room, and we encourage you to lift up a quiet prayer of thanksgiving as you leave your financial gifts there on your way out this evening. For those of you worshiping online, you can give electronically by going to our webpage at shilohucc.org, or uh, you can simply write a check and mail it into the church office. And we do appreciate all the many ways that you support the ministries here at Shiloh. We will not be sharing joys and concerns as part of our prayer time tonight, but if you have a joy or a concern that you would like prayers for, you can write them down on the prayer request slips in the back of the pews and leave them in the prayer bowl, again, on the, in the back on your way out. And for those of you worshiping online, you can send in uh, either by phone or email your prayer request to the church office at any time, and we will forward those to our prayer team. We will be celebrating the service of candlelight tonight, but we will not be using individual candles. You uh, did see some notices that if you have a candle app on your phone or a flashlight app, uh, we're going to encourage you to use those. And those of you worshiping at home, if you would like to get a candle, all you need to do is do that now or pause the recording when the time comes and get your candle and then you'll be ready. This is one way that we think we can be safe with the rise in COVID numbers. Uh, we didn't want to take a chance on everybody spreading germs into the room and we leave on our way out. So this is one way we're trying to be safe this year. That's enough from me, but let's prepare ourselves now to worship with joy and expectation. And during our prelude, let's take advantage of the quiet moment to meditate, to make room in our hearts and minds for the coming of our Lord.
as we worship this night, listen and hear the promises of God that proclaim the dawn of salvation. Sing out praise for all that God has done for us in sending Jesus. See the light of glory shine around us. Feel the warmth of Christ's presence in our midst. Invite Jesus into your heart and into your life. And following our fellowship, go out in joy and in peace, knowing and believing with all your heart and soul that unto you this night has been given a Savior. Let us now worship with faith, hope, and love, with joy and expectation. Wonderful God, giver of the greatest gift of all, we gather here in this holy place and time to remember. We come to hear again the story of prophets and angels, of maid and carpenter, of shepherds and kings, of God with us in the fragileness of human life. O oh God, come to each of us this night and lift up our weary hearts, renew our hope and joy, grant to each of us a new spirit of love and peace. And let your radiant glory shine upon us until we can go forth, joining our voices with all the heavenly host, proclaiming glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill to all. By the grace of the child born for us and for all, we pray. Amen. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare ye a way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, 
and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken to the entire Roman world, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the city of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn a son. She wrapped him in cloth and laid, placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he shall have many titles. He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to all on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. A man approached the minister after the Christmas Eve service and said, I finally figured it out, he declared, why people like Christmas so much. Really, said the pastor, tell me. And the man said, a baby isn't threatening to anyone, so the whole thing is a happy event that really doesn't mean anything at all. Now, we've already heard the scriptural account of Jesus' birth, of how the people longed for a savior how Mary and Joseph had to stay in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn, how shepherds received the good news and came hurrying to see the infant. I think we all have images in our mind of that beautiful manger scene, Mary gazing with pure love at the baby who was sleeping peacefully on a comfortable bed of clean hay and soft, warm blankets. There is a magical glow emanating from the barn as the shepherds approach with cautious wonder, Kings kneel with respect and awe, graciously offering their presence, and the animals are just as quiet and well-behaved as anyone could ask for, dreamily standing guard while an angel flutters on the roof. For many of us, this is what Christmas is all about, a picture-perfect image of the most famous feeding trough in all of history. Nothing more than a nice little fairy tale that offers a brief escape from the world, a happy event, that threatens no one. But this image that we see on Christmas cards, the images we sing about in our carols, that isn't what Luke describes in his gospel. And sometimes it's hard for us to separate the commercial traditions from the biblical story. But if we don't, then we risk losing the message that Luke wants us to hear. Now, Luke doesn't give a lot of details about Jesus' birth and is strikingly concise about it. There's nothing unusual, just an ordinary family going about the daily business of life. There isn't really much preparation for Jesus' birth, no getting the baby's, ready room, baby's room ready, no making sure there were enough diapers or formula or blankets, no planning ahead to make sure there would be a crib available. And the scene is bare. There is a mother and a father tired from a long journey and the work of giving birth. It's likely that the baby cried, that Mary was not nearly as pretty after all of that as our Christmas cards might suggest. There is no holy glow, no sense of magic in the scene that Luke describes for us. It was everyday life, hard life, life as we know it. A few years ago, Catherine Hardwick directed a movie titled The Nativity, which tried to tell the biblical story from Mary and Joseph's point of view. Listen to how she described making the scene at the manger. 
High in the night sky, a bright star shone down upon the humble stable. Inside, cows and sheep huddled for warmth, gazing curiously at the evening's unexpected guests, two young travelers from a distant village and their newborn child, who slumbered peacefully in a straw-filled manger. In the doorway, people quietly gathered to witness the event. For a brief moment, all was still and serene. Then the baby woke up and began to wail. A cow startled and bolted for the door. The sheep baaed loudly. A donkey kicked up straw everywhere. Everyone turned to the director. She shook her head in exasperation and yelled, Cut! It was taking two nights to film, and they still weren't close to getting it perfect. The Bethlehem that had been created in the Italian countryside looked great, but that was about the only thing that was going right. The expert animal wrangler didn't have much experience with farm animals, and he had his hands full. Earlier in the day, the donkey that Mary and Joseph were riding fell and skinned its knee, and its understudy didn't look quite the same. So much for continuity. Now time was running out. The baby playing Jesus could only work for 25 minutes at a time and only until midnight. It was already 11.15 p.m. And tomorrow the crew had to fly to Morocco to shoot the final scene. It was now or never. Everything was going wrong. The baby wouldn't stop fussing. The animals were out of control and the actors were exhausted. Now compare that with the idyllic image that we see everywhere in our Christmas cards and decorations. Which was the more likely reality? Were Joseph and Mary exhausted? No doubt. They had had a difficult journey. Finding a place to stay had been next to impossible. The baby wouldn't stop crying. No one was getting any sleep. Sound familiar? Of course it does. That's real life. The world into which Jesus was born was filled with difficulties every bit as harsh and troubling as what happens in our lives. As Luke describes Jesus' birth, God came into the world on the world's terms. There were no grand preparations for this holy birth. The baby was not born in a palace befitting a king with all of the trappings the Son of God surely deserved. He was born into an ordinary family that was going about the normal activities of their lives. His birth was an unsentimental, earthly, everyday event, which is perhaps the scandal of the story. We are quick to elevate Jesus, God incarnate, to some otherworldly realm rather than believing what Luke tells us, that God came into our world to be with us right where we are. Wouldn't it be more realistic to have images of homeless shelters and soup kitchens and refugee camps on our Christmas cards instead of a glowing stable? Wouldn't it be more honest to depict God's glory shining down on residents of nursing homes and prisons and broken families instead of showing an impossibly perfectly beautiful family? If Jesus really is our Emmanuel, God with us, why are we so determined to make Christmas an enchanting, heavenly, non-threatening event that will take us out of this world when God in Jesus is so determined to enter into our messy, interrupted, chaotic world? Laurel Mathewson is an Episcopal priest. A few months ago, she gathered with a small group of women from her church to talk about how the ongoing pandemic was affecting their lives. And she described the conversation as dark and deep, filled with tears and anguish. A devoted mother of six didn't know how she could help her children with online learning when she cannot read. A grandmother said her COVID anxiety had been completely eclipsed by the sudden deaths of her son and grandson. A recently divorced woman was enduring cancer treatment on her own. A young mother had spent time in a behavioral health unit for anxiety. A widow had just buried her husband of more than five decades. And yet all of them, in their own words, said this, God answered when I cried out in prayer and desperation. God loved me through other people. 
God loved me when I was all alone. God is the only one holding me together, the only one who can hold me. It is very hard, but God is with me. Each woman's story was a witness to the ongoing nativity gift. They could perceive the light of God with them, in them, holding them in the chaotic storms of their life. That is the promise of Christmas, the gift of God that we celebrate this night. Wherever we happen to be, whatever we may experience, however dark our lives may be in any given moment, God has come to us in Christ to strengthen, support, hold, and love us. A man approached the minister after the Christmas Eve service and said, I've finally figured it out, he declared, why people like Christmas so much. Really, said the pastor, tell me. The man said, a baby isn't threatening to anyone, so the whole thing is a happy event. A joyous event that means absolutely everything. Indeed, it does. Amen. Let us gather our hearts together now in a time of prayer. Let us pray. God of light, our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting prince of peace. You have come to be born as one of us, as an infant we can hold and cherish, as a child full of potential and possibilities, as a savior who has shown us your unconditional love and acceptance. You have invited and welcomed all to your manger, and we are overwhelmed by the Christmas images of your immeasurable love for us. We have journeyed long and hard to come to you this night on pathways surrounded by fear and confusion, through dark valleys of grief and loss, enduring threats of evil and bitterness and despair. And like those who were present at Christ's birth so long ago, we come needing to find hope and light for the darkness of our lives. We so want to hear the rush of angel wings, to be overwhelmed and filled by the music of their praise in the heavens, to be lifted up by their joy. We want to see the bright star in the sky, to know that you are our guide and the paths that we journey on will lead us ever closer to you and your desires for us. We want to be surrounded by shepherds and wise men to experience the wonder and the mystery of the hope that is present in your birth this night. We want to be held in the arms of Mary and Joseph to be comforted, encouraged, and strengthened by the love of our families and friends. We want to feel the stillness of this night, to rest with the belief, at least for a time, that all is right with the world, to let go of our fears and concerns, to trust that your justice and righteousness will not fail. On this holy night, O oh Lord, there are people who especially need your grace, and so we humbly ask, May your presence bring comfort to those who are separated by distance or by emotion from those they love. May your touch bring relief and healing to those who are afflicted by illness. May your mighty power protect those who are away from home and in harm's way. May your mercy and compassion reach out to embrace those who feel unworthy or unable to come to you. May the light of your love guide each one of us 
so that we will have the desire and the courage to proclaim your good news in all that we say and do as we seek to love and serve you, our neighbors, and all of creation. Now, gracious God, we lift up to you our offering of prayer, joining our voices with the angels, the shepherds, and with believers the world over. With these words, Jesus, our Savior, has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now, as the lights in the sanctuary are extinguished, I invite those of you with candle apps or flashlight apps on your phones to go ahead and get them out. And those of you joining us at home can light your candles now. May each of you experience the warmth and the mystery of God's presence. May each of you be filled with the quiet joy of knowing that unto you this night a Savior has come. Lord God Almighty rules. The kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall rule forever and ever, King of kings and Lord of lords. of his 
his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love if christ is to be born it will not be in a manger that was long ago now it will be in you you yourself be christ bear love into this world Dare to believe that what is holy may be conceived in you, that the eternal word may be made flesh in your flesh. All God intends is that love be embodied with you, child. You are called to bear this love into the world. With Mary, say yes to the divine in you. Receive now every blessing from on high, and may the love and the power of Jesus Christ always burn warm and bright within you. Merry Christmas. Amen.